All right, so good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We are coming to you live from PAX Unplugged here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I believe this is the last coverage you're going to be getting from the con, but we're super excited because we saved the best for last here. Uh, you might recognize her as the uh, gorgeous co-host from the other streams, but now <laughs> she's just the gorgeous uh, guest. So it's it's Julie from Greenbrier Games. How are you doing today, Julie? I'm great. How are you guys? I am fantastic. So long. It's been such a long time since I've seen I you. I know. It's been like 15 whole minutes. Maybe. I was going to go a second. Uh, yeah, I was going to go a second. Oh, Millisecond, okay. maybe. Sure. It, it's like seemed, I blinked. It seemed like a lifetime. It does seem like a lifetime. <laughs> We've grown so close over the past few days that I can't bear to be without you anymore. Uh, so, Julie... You've yes. been helping me out and showing off a lot of the fantastic games here. But huh? you brought your own fantastic game to show off today. And I what sure game did. is this? That would be Folklore the Affliction. Folklore the Affliction. So yes. what is Folklore the Affliction? Well, it is an RPG tabletop in, in, in a word. In a, that's two multiple words. words. In two words. Okay. Um, so Folklore the Affliction is for people who like to play an RPG, but that don't want to have to have the full time of creating a character, going through the exercise of having a GM or fighting over who's gonna be a GM or nobody wants to be the GM and pressuring one of their friends to be the GM, um, who want to do a story or can create their own anyway, um, or are trying to introduce people into the world of RPGs. So it, it's a nice way to get your foot in the door or just eliminate the slogging that happens with some of the uh, the full pen and paper RPGs. With, yeah, while still ke keeping the story elements and then having a pared down combat system. Fantastic. All right. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And today, because I didn't want to do any spoilers of the stories in the core game, um, we have... so. On the Kickstarter, there is an adventure creation kit that is available to make your own. Did you create a custom adventure for us? We did. We did. I'm a little worried, though, because if you... Cre oh, you... No, no, no. I, I, I went easy on you. So it's the easiest level, okay. which is Dusk. There's four levels of difficulty, so we, we, we are going to... We're going to ease into it. It starts at Dusk. Yeah. So, so what are the four levels? Well, you have you have dusk, okay. twilight. No, I guess it's twilight. Then dusk. Then midnight. Then nightmare. So we don't. No, we're not at nightmare. We're not at nightmare. We're okay. Good. Um, and we are going to. Uh, so the, typically this is a 90 minute. I'm stopping it after the first um, major combat where we zoom in. Okay. Whatever time that's at. Okay. And then we'll see what time we're at. I'm gonna guess that that'll be plenty to get a full experience of the game. You would know better than me. So I would. I would. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rely on you on this um, one. Of course, I'm going to try to kill you, as I've told you. She, she has said that. She the says, beauty of this is, even if we die, so we all have characters, um, and if you would like to sh just show, so Matt is... I'm the Arcanist right there. The Arcanist. So let's say the Arcanist does, in fact, at some point, deplete all of her Vita or life force. If you flip the card, you see that even if she's dead, she can t <laughs> still participate. <laughs> it is only if everybody in the entire party becomes a ghost that we have to stop and reset at a point where we can be revived. So I could be the ghost host then. You could be. That's exciting. Yeah. Can right. I be ghost tank? No. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so I'm playing as the Arcanist today. Uh, Josh, who are you playing as? I'm playing as the Avenging Madman. No, I mean, who are you playing as, not who are you? Uh, both. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> and I'm going to be the Exorcist. Because you're going to exorcise the demons. Well, let's you hope sure, there you are sure you demons. don't want him to be the Exorcist? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got gonna, that all straight. I might need the Exorcist, <laughs> but it's, it's fine. <laughs> After that, I'm, I'm kind of second guessing myself. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, you're, you're passing it over. I think you're passing. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh. I don't need your bandages. I'm or your defend. We all have the same defend and bandages. Did I? I think that's everything there? Mm -hmm. eh. And then you switch here, here. Uh, little one. books. Oh, there we go. I kind of need that, go. too. Take them back. All right. Apparently, I'm now the Arcanist. What, you, what am I? Oh, oh, sorry. There you go. So you're the Arcanist, and I am the Exorcist. Right there. Awesome. So, 
The Exorcist. The, so we've all got uh, some special stuff on here. We've got special equipment cards that we have to start, but I'm sure you're going to explain that in just a second. Well, if you wanted to take... So everybody starts with their own starting equipment, and they have a handy-dandy little... If we want to take a quick look down here. Or that. Board cam. Oh, look at that. Um, I can go to the board cam right there. Yep. And so I'll... So you, uh, you get a little cheat sheet that gives you one of two classes that you're going to level up in, so you kind of have to pick that at the beginning. So for example, uh, the Arcanist can either be a numerologist or a seeker. I am going to be the numerologist, which means once per chapter, I can spend a PowerPoint to re-roll any of my own dice rolls. Okay. Um, and once per story, I can roll two instead of the one. So I will take full advantage of that, I am sure. And then I have my starting cards, so that's a cheat sheet for when you're trying to find them, but I have them here. And then the other stuff on it, we'll, we'll get to when we get to. Okay. So and then, of course, I have my actual character card, which is already set, which you, could, you very kindly showed, that yeah. has all of my stats already preset. Now, because those go up and down, and these are all pretty and we don't want to destroy them, I also gave everybody a little character record sheet. So if you okay. want to name your character, you can. It's really more like your character is an archetype, and you can fill in all the uh, flavor. I'm naming my character. Is Bob. 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 Bob the Avenging Madman. Bob the Avenging Madman. Um, so, Julie, I am going to be Tittle Dumpkins, the Arcanist. Ooh, Tittle Dumpkins, the yeah. Arcanist. I've got a question for you, Julie. Uh, do I want to be the Sanctifier or the Banisher? I'm going to let you uh, make that decision for me. No, no, no. That's that's all you. No? Oh, it is? Okay. Oh. oh any recommendations there? Oh, pick no. One. I recommend you pick one. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to be the Avenger. So what, what does the Avenger do, Josh? Um, I avenge. People, I, 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 like, I I'm you. Avenger. I'm not part of the Avengers, though. <laughs> yeah. uh, just to I'm, make that uh, clarification, just, just and that's a very good point. <laughs> In this game, uh, none of our characters are like super crazy powered. Suddenly, level up and become arc wizards. This is a gothic story of the everyman who's fighting against evil. I'm going to be the Sanctifier Exorcist. I'm going to be like the, the healer there from what I see there. Sweet. And so my uh, Sanctifier Exorcist is going to be Richard. Cool. Richard the Exorcist. Richard the Exorcist. So uh, I'm not going to go there. No, don't. <laughs> no, we're, we're not. We're, we're don't. Go I'm going to be good. <laughs> and then you have a handy-dandy little double-sided tracker. One side is for your Vita. So, for example, that's the top stat of yours. That's your life force. Mm -hmm. um, mine is 21, so I will put that right there so that I can keep track oh. of it. So that when I get hit or use bandages to heal myself up, uh, it goes up and down. And then my power points are the uh, will I exert to do some of my abilities. And my power points start at 5, so that's on the other side. And it's blue, and I put that there. That's and nifty. then I have my abilities, starting abilities, and starting weapon. And I got a bandage because things are going to get bad. And I have a ritual because I am the arcanist. I read a lot of books. Reading reading's important. Reading is fundamental. It's fun. Fundamental. And then I have my miniature. And I have that card. Okay. So, we have all our stuff. We're ready to begin. I yeah, think so. I think so. Okay, awesome. so we begin with a little bit of a story. And I, like I said, to expedite things, typically we would all take turns reading. I'm going to do the reading just to uh, keep things on point, as it were, Mr. Voices. But I might hand it over to you on occasion. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I accept that. All right, so the stolen heart. The caravan trudged along the road at a leisurely pace. Spirit, pulling the wagon, her steady gait, Samuel was no stranger to life on the road. He had been a member of the Traders Guild nigh on 20 years. But his nerves were on edge. He had heard the rumors. Hell, all the traders here at Wayland Point had, but the opportunity was too good to pass up. Ostalink was short on supplies, dangerously so. And the Guild was offering a double share of normal profits due to everyone's unwillingness to brave the road of late. Due to the disappearances. Uh-oh. Bum, bum, bum. Samuel, lost in thought, didn't hear it at first. But Spirit sure did, and true to her name, she bolted, her black form dragging the wagon with her. Contrary to what Samuel's associates believes, Spirit did not scare easily, which was one of the reasons he used her. 
Samuel cursed, began to take off after the cargo, but came to a full standstill at the sight before him. Color drained from his face in terror as he saw his doom come for him. Dun, dun, dun. 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 All right. So, chapter one. And then we get a table. So the table, the skirmish table, is always at the beginning of the chapter. It gives you, if you choose to rest on the road, you can do that and heal. But you're going to maybe have a, a skirmish with a unpleasant thing. Our creatures are either the highwaymen or the restless spirit. Mm -hmm. So if we decide to stop and rest, we might stay Terry too long and they might show up. Just so you know. Understandable. So... We start off and we are at the Golden Inn um, because the local Traders Guild representative was looking to meet with us. And when he comes, he tells us that uh, there is an urgent matter and lets us know about this foreshadowed story that we already heard, that there are people disappearing on the road. A lot of their people have, have, have not shown up. The supplies are missing. Their people are missing. They're worried that they're dead. They're losing money. We happen to have a reputation for maybe already going after some of the stranger things that are happening in the land and would we please go and investigate so um to start we are in Eurotrusk, which our story tells us okay um and that we are going to have to tra travel to ostalink so here we are on the board we're in Eurotrusk as a party we need to travel to ostalink to uh go find lydia because she actually was one of the people who actually made it through, but word has been sent that she had an experience, but she got away. Right. So to go in interview her and find out what's going on for real, if it's if it's some sort of union problem or if it's actually something, something supernatural. Something then supernatural. So we are going to travel to Osling. So on our story map, it says travel towards the road, starting and stop after the group's first movement. Off-road movement is not allowed during this world map travel. Okay. So normally, and if you look at the board, you can see we have the roads, and then these are off-roads. To match with them, you get either road events or off-road events. Okay. Road events are slightly safer, not as much reward. Off-road events are certainly faster to travel across the countryside, however, much more dangerous. We're being told we don't get to do the dangerous part yet. Aww. And I know the madman is a madman and probably would just trudge headlong into the wilderness, but we don't get to do that. I could see it in the I don't talking about. I've already gone. I'm down the road. <laughs> so, our leader currently is the exorcist, and I know that because he... Oh, no, wait. He gave it back to me, I think. What are you nope, looking for? There's a really big token. This? Right there. Oh, that one? Right this one. You. Medallion. That cool. one. And it's on the lighter golden side, which means it's daytime. And cool. the darker purple side means it's nighttime. But, um, and we're going to start on the lighter side because we always start travel on the daytime. You don't leave and travel the land in the dark. In this land. Everybody knows it. It's kind of a life rule here. So we always start during the day. So you're going to start during the day. What is your stride of your character? My stride of my character is a four. All right. So you're going to take go from your trust and you're going to move four spaces towards Ostalink on the road and then stop. So down down this path right Correct. here. So that's that would be one, two, three, four there. Yep. You got okay, it. Okay, cool. Cool. So and then we stop and then you take the road event and Beautiful. you read the daytime side. So daytime side of the road event here, we have shortcut. We were told of a shortcut that would speed our journey through the land. Keep this card and discard it on a future turn to avoid drawing a road event card. Uh -huh. Are you serious? Yeah. I found the shortcut. That is the one nice card in the entire deck. <laughs> she looks. So guys, she, she looks mildly upset there. That's the one nice card. We got a gimme. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm going to hold on to this. And nothing happens. But then I was told to stop and read before we continue. Normally, we would just keep taking turns, and then it would be Josh's turn, my turn. We would right. keep going until we got to the destination we wanted. But the specific direction told us to stop, so I'm going to read the next part. You head towards Ostalink. Anxious to speak with Lydia, the trader who delivered her caravan. And you catch sight of a bit of torn canvas hanging from the trees not far off the road. 
That doesn't bode well. It really doesn't. You move closer and find a wagon hidden in the trees. The canvas Ooh, no dangling from the branches looks to have come from the wagon's cover, which appears to have been ripped in several places, revealing an array of goods. And it doesn't take long to realize that most of the contents are still there, but the food has been torn and just completely devoured. At the head of the wagon lies a dead pack horse, still tethered to the wagon, its raw, legs raw with exposed flesh. And several bite marks. There's no sign of the caravan's escort. So, it appears that there was a wolf attack. Okay. Um, but on closer inspection, you realize there are no wolf tracks on the road, just by the woods where the wagon is. So it doesn't explain why, what would have stopped them and had it head towards the woods in the first place. So someone place. was hungry like a wolf. Really? <laughs> really? Oh my goodness. Did you just make a Duran Duran joke? Yes, I did. I am so sad about that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt, you had taken that turn. It would have been Josh's turn, so it's now nighttime. And Josh is the leader. And Josh is the leader. It's going to, it says, choose your path. The caravan supplies are mostly intact, still needed in Nostaling, but transportation to its destination will be time consuming without a pack animal. Okay. So we are either going to have to take the wagon with us, and our movement is reduced by one for the rest of the travel. Okay. Or. Um, we choose not to, and we forego whatever might happen if we deliver it. As the leader... As the madman, oh, yes. I am going to take the wagon and start pulling it. Great. Okay, so as the leader... Free stuff! take the red story marker. So, Matt, could you hand him the red... It looks like an open book. Nope, nope. Oh, nope. this one here. Yep. So if you want to show that just really quick... Certainly. This is one of the ways that we change up the stories... Very simple, there's several different colors. And so sometimes when you get one, that's going to affect the story later on. Well, it's always going to affect the story later on. How it affects it, we don't know yet. We, we shall see. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. We'll see. All right. All right, so. It's okay, we found a shortcut. Uh, all good. Um, and then, of course, since we're here and there is a <coughs> wagon that has been torn and it looks rather suspect because it doesn't look like the wolf stopped it. We're going to do an awareness or nature check. All characters can roll. We only need one success, and it needs to be a seven or higher. So we're all going to take a turn and roll a d10. Okay. If we get a seven, if any one of us gets a seven or higher, and if there, if you have a, let's see, it says awareness or nature. So take a quick look at your characters and see if you have... I have archaeology, nerve, and occult. I have archaeology, faith, and speech. I have uh, uh, ecology, and, ecology nerve. and nerve. So, so uh, we don't have anything. We don't have any bo bonuses to our roll, so here's hoping. It's five. Is that five a ten? That's ten. Oh, oh Julie. Uh, Julie got it. You're welcome. Thanks, Julie. All right, so we succeeded. Um, I mean, thanks, Tiddly Wumpkins. I think that's your tittle, name. Tiddle Dumpkins. Tiddle, tiddle Dumpkins. There you go. Tiddle. Tiddle Dumpkins. Do we call you Tiddle for short? No. Well, I'm a madman. I don't care. How about Dumpkins? <laughs> um, you see what appears to be the trader's footprints heading off the road in the opposite direction of the caravan. Any character who has successfully made this check becomes perceptive. Hey. You're perceptive. So, and then I move on. So before I move on, just to let you know, we have statuses. They are negative or positive. Take a quick look. On the positive side, I am now perceptive. Perceptive. That's the negative side. Oh, that's the negative side. I'm just a negative Nancy. Uh, so we have perceptive, and that is going to be right here. Adds plus one to my awareness, which would have been helpful for that check in the first place, but okay. you know. I'll do it. And then... You're on your toes now. And may I borrow the pencil so that I can mark it off on my handy-dandy little tracker sheet. And it also says uh, ignore darkness penalties. Ooh, so if we end up in a place that there is no light, and there's a penalty, like to movement or something like that... You don't care. I'm good. You're good to go. Okay, so that, that seems right. to have paid off so far. Solid. Okay. So, we're going to keep traveling. So, Josh, would you like to keep us on the road? I mean, do I have another choice? No. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I can only move one, right? You're going to move three because your stride is four, I believe. Okay, it's minus one to our movement. I thought it was our movement to... Movement is four. four. Okay. Is four. It's minus one to the movement. So okay. I thought the movement was down to one. No. Which is minus no, no, one. No, okay. Minus oh, that would be okay. I, th I thought we were going to like be like really slow. 
All right, is this a fork in the road? Yeah, you're going to want to take that. Yep. Yeah. There you the, go. I don't want to go to the. Uh, no. You the don't want to go into the. You want to go to Ostalink. I don't know. I would go through it through the hollow. <laughs> the madman's difficult. I'm, I have I have bad directions. He, he I'm does. Mad. He does. Nighttime. Uh, can, can we use the shortcut? No. Oh, we could use the shortcut. It's a nighttime. Nighttime's supposed to be worse. Mad Do we want to? The madman is the leader. Uh, I think. Oh, it's only when you're the leader. Oh no, no, I'm just saying. He, I think he could take it. Uh, keep this card and discard it in a future turn to avoid drawing. So, madman, you're the leader right now. So, so I'm gonna, I, I think we're gonna take the back. shortcut in the night with the wagon. That makes sense. It makes sense. All right. Okay. And so this that, is, that was our discard. Oh. So that that's the end of that then, right? And so then it's my turn. It's your yeah, turn. Yeah, it's your turn. Oh no. So I get the leader token. Oh no. And now it's daytime, daytime again. And I'm gonna move three. One, One two, two, three. Still not there. So now I'm going to take the card and I'm going to We wouldn't have been there either card. way if we took the I wagon know, or not. But this is um, disappointingly <laughs> uneventful. It's like a nice leisurely stroll along the countryside. Wait, we got enjoying, some free supplies. We're enjoying the fresh air. All right. I have a feeling it's going to take a turn for the worse now. The title of this one is Panic. At the it's not disco? me. <laughs> we're going to no. make all these just, song just puns. <laughs> As the evil afflicting the area increases in power, the citizens flee for their lives. Characters cannot obtain new companions until the start of the next chapter, unless instructed by a story. No characters for us, which is really quite sad because there are some super fun ones, like the snowy owl. Aww. Or, let's see, the mystic. The mystic. We don't get anybody. We get no one. Everybody is scared. We don't so have friends anymore no now. No friends. Nobody. We're not having a bad time. Chat say not is. every hero's journey has to be eventful. <laughs> 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 Clearly, you haven't played with me. This is a disappointment for me. Matt, it is your turn. It is nighttime. Well, thank you so much. And uh, my name is not Matt. It's Richard, by the way. Just want Richard, to make sure. Richard, it's nighttime. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's see. Where are we going? We're going to move, and we're going into uh, Ostalink now, because I've got uh, four stride. We're down to three, but it's one, two, three to get there. Uh, do we get a robot, or something else happens? And now we move on to the next part of the story. So. All right. Traveled on the road, got a wagon, found a shortcut. Oh, no. We were That's supposed to jump to a missing trader and then travel. What happened? Back I'm, it up. What, what happened? I'm sorry. Back it up. One, two, three. Uh, no, back it up to the back to where we were. We're one. gonna pretend that ha happens in the future. So yeah. one, two, three, four. That was entirely my fault. What happened? I'm sorry. We weren't supposed to travel yet. Oh. I jumped ahead. It said go to the missing trader. Where's the missing trader? It's a story piece right here. Oh, okay. Oh, she forgot. She got to read a whole part of you the story. You follow the tracks for over an hour. Visibility becoming clearer. Ahead of you, a solitary fit sits slumped on a large boulder amidst a sparsely wooded grove. You approach cautiously, calling out to the individual in concern. The man before you is thin and haggard with several days of growth filling in his sunken cheeks. It is clear, uh, nope, prolonged sun exposure and dehydration has blistered his forehead and left his lips chapped and peeling. That doesn't seem very nice. He's unresponsive to your attention and looks ahead as if he, you aren't even present. Okay. So, any one character, speech six, to try to talk to him and snap him out of it. I've got plus one speech. That would be you then. You're going to exercise roll or one the roll? demon? I'm going to exercise his demon. Can I give him some holy water? No. Nope. Do we all get the roll or just ten? Any one character. Okay. 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 That's a four. Plus, plus one, one is a five. Is a five. And it needed to be a, a six? So, it needed it to be at least a six. Oh, no. So, failure. Read story moment 11. So we go to the back and we read the story moment. Oh, fantastic. The man does not respond to your attempts to shake him out of his stupor, and suddenly he looks up and lets out an anguished howl that freezes your soul. He's running at the wolf. And all characters become spooked on a four. So we all have to roll. If we get a four or higher, we, we, are, we can forego that. I am not spooked. I'm not spooked. I am not spooked. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you guys just hungry like a wolf. Come on. No, Fine. I, I, I got spooked. Man. I, I rolled a one. I got spooked. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's spooked. Everybody's okay with it. Okay. The scream did not phase anyone. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. But if you had become spooked, <laughs> that would have been a negative status effect. 
um, which you would have a negative one to any nerve checks, and but then we could roll for nerve checks later on in the story. Okay. I'm not happy we don't, with the we, success of this group. <laughs> we're, right. we're too good. You we don't, really are. We don't get the spoopy. All right. Be- from behind you, a loud motion shivers down your spine. A barely visible form emerges from the shadows. Floating gently above the ground, its eyes purposeful scan the area before settling upon you. They blaze with light, and the spirit shrieks in anger and attacks. Ah! So we are going to skirmish now with a restless spirit. Ah, okay. Now, this is... A typical skirmish. Oh, you got it there? I'm going to go through what a typical... Well, if you would like to take a look at the Restless Spirit first over there. Sure would. And we're on the skirmish side. So that's a Restless Spirit Casper's butt. We have a character count here. It looks like Casper, right? It's going to be rolling a D6, it looks like. Right, Julie? Oh. So, So, if you'll notice, typically depending on how many people there are, is how many on the tracker we would roll. So for two people, we would roll a d4, so it would be one through four hits that it would need, versus one through six. For this two particular, through eight. Right. So for this particular skirmish, um, the counter is automatically at four. Okay. So we need to hit it four times successfully to defeat it. I feel like we can do this, team. I have this bail hook. Let's hope so. I'll bail him out. And then to do that, we're going to roll for 100. It's defense is 42. So we need a 42 or higher. However, we do have, we can use our might because we weren't spooked. All right. Which is disappointing to me. Your might adds to whatever your roll is. So you're going to roll and then you're going to add for the Avenger Man Man plus five. For me, it's plus three to my might, whatever my roll is. Okay. Um, at this point in time, because we weren't supposed to move on, it is still Josh's turn. It would still be night. All and right. you're going to roll first, and you're going to roll these two. Roll on these okay, two. So you're rolling those two die. For 100. And did my Avenger stuff kick in yet, or not yet? Melee attacks, or this an encounter. All right, it's not a this counter. Is, this is a skirmish. Okay. We'll get to an encounter. Uh, 36. 36 plus 5 is? Uh, 41. Which is not enough. You do not hit it. But my... Uh, plus 5? So 46? That's for... Not for a skirmish. That's for an encounter. Oh, that's, oh, that's for a counter? Okay, I'll just... Anything okay. else? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. All right. My t- Uh, nope. Matt's my, turn. My turn? Okay, so let me let me roll here. Let's see what we got. Uh, I rolled a forty-one. Forty-one. Oh, what's your might? I'm sorry. Which which die is first? Is it black die first or? Yeah. Correct. Okay, forty-one. Uh, my might is a uh, four, so that's a forty-five. So one hit, so it goes down by one. Oh yeah, that's how you do it, madman. Now, I neglected to mention because I just wanted to show the regular way first, so we're all going to take a turn, and then I'm going to tell you the bonus things that you can do for this special event. So I'm, I'm being a little sneaky, you, because you're supposed to do all the reading, oh. but I wanted to show what a typical skirmish looked like first. Okay. This is a typical skirmish. Okay. 55. 55. Hey, so he's been hit twice, but he would still need at least two more hits to okay. be out. Now it would be the Restless Spirit's turn. So somebody should roll for the Restless Spirit. Oh, do it. You want right. to kill us. Okay. She wants to do it. And I roll a 94. Wow. Which I did warn you is what happens when I roll for the monsters. What? You wanted low numbers for the monster, right? A 94 certainly def- beats my 37 defense. I have 39. Uh, yeah, no, mine's, mine's a 36. Okay. So it's I was saying does. Now, the one other thing that I also need to tell you is we could have chosen to either attack or defend. Okay. Um, we're all attacking, which means we don't get, a d- we don't get any defense. But I'm going to let you do that for next time if you want to make that choice. Because the number is a four, I'm going to look over here at what it can do to me. Nope, on this one it's not a number. It's just the Restless Spirit attack roll. If it's greater than 80, 
It Which is. Which line is. Sure was. You lose uh, 1d6 of Vita. Otherwise, it's just 1d4 of Vita. So, I roll a d6. And does that happen to everyone? And everybody loses four Vita. I got this uh, Avenging Madman. I ignore 1d4 damage from attack. Yep. Usable during, during a skirmish. skirmish. I rolled so a three, so I'll take one damage. There you go. Because I don't care. Yes. And the Kickstarter just spoke. 250k. 250k. That is awesome. Go Julie. Fantastic. Go Julie. Now we're cooking. All right. All right. I'm still going to try to kill him. I know. If, I if you don't kill us, I have a feeling you're just going to make another story so we just die. Yeah. <laughs> until it's we totally die. That's totally the plan. All right. So. So that was a that was like the basic fundamentals of a skirmish. We're gonna do one more round, and now we're gonna add in the the additional um, rules that were added as a bonus to this one. I know because it had a nice handy dandy little red here that said, "Wait a minute, Wait there's a minute. there's extra stuff." Okay. I wanted to show the basics first before we added the extra stuff. All right. The extra stuff is, and especially because. You're the exorcist. Exorcising. You can pacify the spirit instead of choosing to attack or defend, you can say you're going to try to pacify and if you pass a faith seven, you do two hits. Oh, hello. I just didn't want it to be like over and done. Oh, yeah, I, no, wanted, I, I wanted a little bit of attacking you and hitting you and hurting I, you. I get it, I get so it. So I, I might <laughs> have, yep. <laughs> the end truly wins. <laughs> I haven't written it that way. I didn't write it that way, so it can't happen. So it's Today. my turn now, right? Yes. So is is it an extra? Can so I can I use this? So you can either roll your d hundred and try to hit it, or you can tr try to pacify the spirit by rolling for a faith seven. And I'm assuming that the exorcist has a faith bonus. He sure does. He has a plus two faith bonus. He does. So he has to roll a five. It's time for me to exorcise the demons. Let's see what I get here. I rolled a nine right there. So plus two. That's an 11. Yeah. No, so so he's he's done. Yeah. He's been pacified. Oh so. We got him a pacifier? Success. Reduce the skirmish counter by two. Okay. So double. I like it. Yeah. I just I wanted to I wanted to, I wanted to ensure I hit it. Oh no, I, I, un I understand. I totally did that on So purpose. could could I use this uh, now as well, or uh, this purification here, restore four Vita to yourself or an adjacent ally usable during a skirmish? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna use that on myself, and I'm gonna go up to my max Vita again. That's disappointing, but okay. I'm feeling good. All right. I'm feeling right. good, Julie. It's very selfish. Uh, call me a mollusk because I'm feeling very feeling very shellfish, shellfish. right now. Fantastic. Um, thanks, Richard, the mollusk. <laughs> Any time. All right. So attention, you must escort the traitor to Ostalink. So we we are going to pretend we went through that whole thing after the fact. So we still already have this, and it said that it could ignore it if it was the story. Okay. But as the leader, you must take him on as a mission companion. Okay, so I get the yellow story marker also. Uh -huh. So I got all the story markers. So you have the yellow story marker and the red story marker. And okay. now we would have traveled through and gotten there. But we already had that experience. So we're going okay. to fast forward to Ostalink. Okay. So here we are. And it was at Matt's turn at that point, And it was because it was day and then it was night. So I think it's back It's back to me? It's to you and yeah. it's nighttime. And you arrived at Ostalink. Fantastic. Okay. So here we are. All right, we're here. You arrive in Ostlink, weary from your trek. Now that you've reached the safety of town, it's time to find out what you can from Lydia. Um, first, you search at the lo local traders' guilds. If you have the yellow story marker, read story moment one on page eight. So okay. I'm going to switch page. So we do have that. Woo! The traitor you found in your travels remains unresponsive, but when asked his name, he mutters, Samuel. Okay. Sammy. <laughs> the guild is relieved to see that Samuel is alive and immediately sends for a physician. After some time, he regains his sentence, senses, but has no recollection of the events prior to leaving Eurotrosk. And thanks, he offers to accompany you, hoping to get you to the bottom of this mystery. The character with the yellow story marker gains the talisman. Now... 
again, the story said we can do it, so it is not one that is just a random from the road deck. So you, in fact, can have, even though we had that panic one, gain the story, the t the townsman. So You're getting the townsman, Josh. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm making a party. I mean, Bob. 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 Send Bobs. And if you want to show the townsman, he looks pretty harrowed. It's Jesus. It's a townsman. With a steaming uh, mug of ale. Plus one awareness. Coffee. Plus one speech. Speak better than me. There you go. You got a buddy there, Josh. I got a buddy. And he gives you a plus one to your awareness and plus one to your speech. Batman's learned how to speak better. If so only like he's a little bit way. crazy. You're a little bit crazy. Together, you calm each other down. I don't know how he's, that he's, works. He's he's my I, like, he's my uh, showman. Like he's he built me he's up. He's your hype. He's, he's my your, hype he's, guy. He's the hype man. I don't. I I think I think you're both just <laughs> muttering in the corner. And uh, I mean, we might be. And therefore, yeah. it like works out better. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go with it. The red story marker, which you also have. I have all of the markers. I wanted to do everything. Green story moment, page nine. This is really backfiring, my trying to kill you. The guild is ecstatic to get the missing supplies that are story, sorely needed, and in thanks, each character is given a bandage token. So we had one to start. We each get one more, and we have some right over there. So that's super great, because if you want to take show them, the bandage is the picture on one side, and on the back, it shows you that each one recover for Vita. So when you're in a fight, that's going to come in handy. Fantastic. Right. We got what if I just want to dress up like a mummy? Yeah, that's what yeah, we're going to do. We're going to wrap do. ourselves up with it. We'll, we'll feel a lot better <laughs> afterwards. What is wrong with that? A lot I'm of the madman. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> Julie, what did you expect? I know. Your audio will be a bat. I know. <laughs> Welcome to Swiss Gaming. I'm still sad about it. All right. So, we find Lydia. Finally. Finally, we find Lydia. Lydia! And she's speaking in hushed whispers with several of her fellow traitors. When you approach, the group falls silent and eyes you suspiciously. Because we did bring them madmen. Yeah. Um, Is that elevator eyes? Yeah. You explain your business and ask Lydia for any details she can share. Well... I re reached here safely, but by the stars, I say I was lucky, especially with the others going missing. I was it was approaching twilight, and I only had a few more hours of Tostalink, but the day had been a long one, so I thought I would stop for the night. I set up camp, and I was eating my evening fare, and heard the most horrific scream of my life. It did not stop, but came closer. I can't say what I saw exactly, but I thought at the time it was some sort of ghost, something that seemed to suck the light from the stars themselves. Ooh. I ran for quite a time, but when this eerie screaming stopped, I doubled back, not wanting to lose my payday. There was no sign of the thing, but I decided that a few hours more travel was fine by me. Could spirits be at work here? You've been concerned about the state of the veil in these parts. Perhaps its fragile condition is causing the dead to haunt the area. The closest burial grounds of any substantial size are in Gorin's tombs. It might be worth investigating. Oh, we get to we get to go to the tombs. The tombs. So, for the sake for the sake of we have already experienced travel, let us say that we already have made it to Gorin's tombs. Okay. All right. Unless you would like to do the traveling again. I mean, we're not. Th it's only what two turns. Sure, we can do it. Yeah. Or. At this point, we could actually go. Who's so it, now? Matt, it's off Matt's turn. It's going to yeah. go back to yours. It's to and the we man. start during the day. Yeah, we'll leave it at daytime. I get rid of these books, right? During the day. The day. You get rid of the books. The story moments go back over there. All right. And you are. We're back up to our regular stride because we've dropped off our, our wagon. Our wagon. We returned could it. Move one, two, three, and then we're past the red and go to the off road, and then the next turn we'd be back on. But your point, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So either way, it's going to take us two turns. Oh, yeah, so we're just going to go one, two, three, four. Okay. What is the road event? Wanderers. Ooh. A band, a band of angry town folks approached. A uh, metal, heavy metal band. <laughs> just want to see Julie's face. It's like, uh, they appeared to 
have narrowly escaped death. We offer our assistance. The leader may pass a speech five. Luckily, I got oh, my town's man speech. to come help me speak. No, no, he's cool, guys. He's cool. Oh. I know him. Oh. That, that's a nine. Okay. Uh, to take them as a mission companion, escort oh. them to any town to gain ten coins. Can't have them. But it causes them to run off on terror. Keep this card. So. We can't because we already had the I'm previous a, card. I'm a good talker, and they want to join. They want to, but they really have someplace important to be. But I think you smell a little bit, and they want away. No. <laughs> I smell. <laughs> okay. All right. So, and then I'm. Oh no! Then it's my turn. It's night yeah, time. So it's night time, and, and we, we go to the tomb. tomb. Uh, who right. wants? Everyone wants to go to the tomb at night, right? It sounds like a fun time, to be honest. Who doesn't want to go into a tomb full of potentially undead, rising from the grave spirits? At uh, we have a quick question from chat. Is, the regular, is this the regular game board or oversized? This is the regular game board. Yeah. Um, the oversize, I would say, if we zoomed out, just to give a comparison, maybe. So this is, this is the size, and the oversize would take up maybe half this table. Oh, really? Yes, it's a mat, as opposed to just... So this. I'm a mat. No, it's you're a rich. a neoprene mat. Oh, yeah, I'm Richard. You're Richard, the mollusk. I'm a purple mat, not a neoprene mat. All right. <laughs> just so you get the comparison. Okay. So we're there. We're somewhere. At Goran's tomb. Clouds heavily blanket the dark darkening sky with night's approach. The slow drizzle has per persisted over the last several hours and turned your belongings into a sodden mess. You experience a sense of unease as you survey your surroundings, as if there's something waiting to jump on you from behind a gravestone or crumbling statue. Matt, are you hiding? Bah. Yeah. Um, not sure where to begin your search. You decide it would be a good idea to look around for clues. We need to pass an awareness seven, all characters, one success is needed. And you have a bonus Plus to your one. awareness. Oh, I have no awareness. Don't you have a bonus from before? Because you're And I have a bonus from being perceptive. Uh, that's an 11. I'm good, 10. 11, 10. I rolled a one. You got a rock. <laughs> I found a rock. <laughs> um, all right, so we ha it was a all characters, only one success was needed. We had two successes. You're the Scooby-Doo in the group. Yeah. So we read success, story moment six. You listen carefully for the traditional sounds of moaning that usually accompany the restless dead, but all you hear is the howl of the wind rushing past the headstones. Then your ear catches something out of place, an angry muttering sound too visceral for something of su supernatural origins. You follow the sound a short way before discovering the source. And everybody who made the awareness skill check and passed it receives 15 lore. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, so that's get, not me. That's not you, but we each get 15 lore. Lore is what you use to level up. Okay. So on my lore, I'm going to put 15. And how much lore do we need to level up? A hundred. That's a so lot of lore. We find, ooh, so so thank we're getting you for there. that reminder. We also each, we defeated the Restless Spirit and we got sure six did. coins each. Six coins? Yeah. Oh, okay. What can I buy with six coins? Mm, six stitches. <laughs> or a bandage. Okay. We have a lot of bandages. Yeah, so I think we're good right now. Yeah. Um, when do we buy stuff? A town, I'm assuming? Um, when we're in town, and it says, use town services. Okay. Um, I made it like it was way too easy for you. Come on. I, and we haven't earned enough money yet. You you said that you can uh, go to town and spend your money later. I want to go shopping. No. All right. I want a new pair of shoes. To your surprise, you discover an old man with wisps of graving graying hair. A large hound lies lazily at his feet, clearly miserable in the cold rain. The dog notices your approach well before the man and gives a menacing warning growl. The old man, who is busily shoveling a pile of loose soil on a grave while cursing, looks up at an ang with an angry stare. Matt, I think that you should read The Grave Digger. I, sh I should uh, read... Chat says, 100 lore, that sounds like some tabletop RPG level system. Now, what you said this basically is, 
kind of a Correct. four game slash tabletop right. system. However, when you get to those tracks, it's much pared down. You're not going to be sitting there for 20 minutes figuring out your. Yeah. Yeah. More grave diggers come to undo my work. Well, I'll have none of that. It's time I teach you robbers a lesson. We're going to fight the grave digger? The Undertaker's hound rises to his feet with a snarl on its foaming mouth, awaiting permission to attack. Story skill check. Speech seven, the leader. Oh, it's you. That's me. You don't know how to talk. I apparently am smelly, according to yeah, no. Bob. the madman. Bob the dog's the just going to want to eat you. Tittle Dumpkins is like, here, puppy. Oh, and puppy. you rolled a 10. You rolled a 10. The puppy oh. likes you. That's a good boy. Good puppy. Good puppy. Good puppy. Really good puppy. You scratch him on the belly a little bit. Yeah. Get some belly rubs in for the foamy mouth puppy. You carefully articulate the purpose of your search at Goran's tomb, explaining that a supernatural threat is stirring here. And you are in no way related to those jerks. His anchor gradually diminishes, but his eyes are still hard as diamonds. His hand sends his hound, sensing that his hostilities are unlikely to occur, settles back down to rest at his master's feet, gain eight lore, and become respected. So All now of we us have gain eight lore? Eight lore. Oh. So I'm at 23 lore, and now I'm also respected, which is pretty awesome. Respected is plus one to my speech and plus one to trickery. Thank you. Josh isn't paying attention no. there. Get eight lore. And I'm sorry, one more time. You, we get eight lore and what else? No, that's me. Oh, they're just I you? I was the leader. Oh, I thought it was everyone. No. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yep. Yeah, no, cool. she's not, he's just, he just wants more lore. I, w I have zero lore, so it would be nice. Cool. Tensions are now eased, and the Undertaker tells you about the grave robberies that have plagued Gordon's tubes of the past couple weeks. Every night, a half dozen graves get dug up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's you. Oh, where, where, where yeah. am I at? Yeah. Bottom right. Ah. Every night, a half dozen graves get dug up. The treasured possessions kept their dead. Uh, kept. Ooh, I lost my point. Oh goodness. The treasured possessions kept with their dead, stolen, and more recently, several of the larger tombs have been broken into. I've not even finished repairing the damage to the grounds, let alone what mischief they are up to now. I know they are here as I chase them off, but I could not keep up with these old legs. Do me a favor and get them for me. Teach them a lesson in manners, unpleasantly. It was, uh, if I was any, any sort of fortune teller, I would wager on them being what you need to find anyhow. All right. So. We are going because we are getting down to the point where uh, we're running out of time and I want to show an encounter. We're going to skip the painstaking and harrowing travel to where they are and say that we've actually found them. Okay. So. All right, fast travel. We get to the crematorium where they have been our hold up, and we're going to jump to that point. So. Are they making cream? At a crematorium? I don't think that's what they make that's at a crematorium. That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. It's not long before your hunt is at an end. You emerge in a black soot crematorium, the temperature hot from the burning furnaces, which fill most of the room. The highwaymen you have been hunting are locked in combat with translucent beings who fade in and out of reality. With shrieks of fury, they tear into their mortal victims. Several of the grave robbers already lie dead on the floor, drained of life. Before you can act, the grave robbers are able to dispatch the last of the wailing spirits. Pending heavily, the leader of the men looks up and says, looks like we have more company. Finally, a mortal enemy to fight. We do not intend to share our bounty, so this can only end one way. With hugs? Drawing swords, the remaining highwaymen attack. All right. So, this is the point where we, instead of having an abstract fight, Ooh. zoom in on the map and fill it in. So, I have this handy dandy, and now I'm going to stand, and it's going to get all scary. Map. If you want to show oh, absolutely. right there what it looks like. Okay. Maybe. I don't know if we're going to be able to reach it. It might be okay. Might be okay. We got most of it there. There we go. All right. So I've got. Do, 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 do. And so 
I have some dead bodies I need to put in there. Okay. Oh, oh, which oh, are right over there. Oh, dead bodies there. Yep. <clears throat> because the spirits came from the bodies of the, or the highwaymen were being attacked and some of them were dead. So we put those where it's shown. And then we put in our highwaymen. <coughs> And then we're going to pin in our search locate spots. And we also get a couple of, can I see the uh, little magnifying glasses? Oh, sure thing. How many do you need there? There we go. Search locations. Cool. Okay. All right. It's, and it's, then it's we filling up nicely there. are going to start... That's, yep, here. So we're all start. Oh, that was, yep, there we go. Like oh, what have you? There's a lot okay. of stuff there. Okay, and I believe it's your turn to start. Oh, oh boy. And we're at the daytime side. Oh boy. So here's how this is gonna work. The objective, the primary goal is to defeat all foes. We've got two highwaymen. We're gonna try to kill them. Here. So instead of the skirmish side, we're going to use Ooh. the encounter side. So this is our highwayman here. So we got some stats there. There's three of us. So he's going to have 20 Vita. Uh, then they've got a bunch of stats on the left there. Special power. If the total attack roll of the highwayman is greater than 90, uh, they will pilfer a random consumable item from their target. This item is lost forever. And then they've got some more powers uh, on the, the right-hand side there. Yep. All right. That must cool taste, taste well. So, um, I'm going to put this to the side. I do not need the lore book because now we're just going to fight until until I'm told it's time to stop. Or we kill them. So, or we die? Or we die. Is, it, is that an option? No. All right. So, there's <laughs> three of us. So, they have 20 Vita. Is that correct? Uh, yes, they do. So, I'm also going to take their trackers that look These right here. like ours. Thank you. And since there's two of them, I'll put... Two of them out. Twenty and twenty. Very good. All right. And now we're gonna beat them up. We dance. Ah. Um. Except by dance, I mean fight. Dance with blades. So since I'm starting off. Okay. I thought. Matt My was first stride is still four, so now instead of four on the road, I have four up to four. I'm going to go for this guy. Um, I have... Well, it's kind of a shame I'm going first because my stiletto has flank advantage, so it would be better for me I thought he has the first somebody... player token. Oh, you have the first player token. I sure do. All right. Wherever you go, I'm going to go too so I can flank them and I get bonuses to my attack. All you. Well, so my movement is going to be my stride here, right, Julie? Correct. Okay, so I can't really get close enough to anyone to do anything, right? Uh, where? What are you? What's your so one, two? That's a three, furnace. Oh, oh, I, I three, agree. Three, four. Yep. So let me move adjacent to him then. Yep. Get all up in his grill. Yep. And uh, I want to, I want to make it attack. Really dance. So how, how am I going to attack him here, Julie? Well, you should have a weapon. I sure do. I've got my Aspergillium. Aspergillum. So that is going to tell you what damage you do if you successfully hit him. Okay. All combat is on the D, the D100. So one black, one white die, and you're rolling to see if you can beat their defense. Adding okay. your might bonuses if you have any. What's their defense? Their defense, because we are in dusk, is a 45. All right, so I have to beat a 45. So this says plus five might, and then I've got four natural might, so that's plus nine to my total roll there, correct? So I need to roll a 34 or better? Yep. Okay. So it's either a chance to do it. I rolled a 40. So you're good. So what? now you're going to roll whatever your aspergillium uh, is a D4. So Toss me a D4 there. Thank you so much. So I'm going to roll my D4. Let's see what I get there. I rolled a four. <laughs> really, he's upset. <laughs> Why did she kill you? <laughs> it's not working out for me. I love All you, right. Julie. My turn? Uh, yes, I believe. Well, hold on. Uh, that is not a demonic, a demonic a spirit or an undead creature, correct? No. Okay. 
it's just a dude. Just a dude. A dirty, scruffy, oh. selfish dude. So that's the end of my turn then. Yep. I can do that at the beginning of the turn, right? Oh, so they counter? Yep. So I'll choose the other guy. So you're going to... Put a token on him? Okay. This little target thing? Ah, uh, yep. So what did you do there, Josh? I targeted this guy. And that's one of your special abilities there? Yeah, uh, it's one of my special abilities. I do plus one damage when I fight him. Oh, very nice. And then also, I give other characters fighting the same foe as me plus one damage to all melee attacks. So if we're all fighting the same foe, you oh. guys get a plus bonus. Very good. So uh, now it's going to be Josh's turn there, actually, right, Julie? Sure. I mean, he's after me, so I'm, I'm assuming. Okay. Or is, or is it free-formed, or is it like we have to keep No, going? no. You, well, you can forego. You can talk about doing it that oh, way. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, what, is, what is this thing here? Uh, that is if you choose to go search one of the dead bodies, roll one of the D10s on the board, and I will tell you if you find... All right. oh, no, 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 no. That's not right at all. The dead oh. bodies are there and have their own separate thing. Uh, so thought. give me a quick check to look and see what it is. No, that's right. Once you flip it, it depends. Well, it's, it's, it's whether you go to search or not. I'm going to search the body because I'm a madman and I, I don't care about fighting. Awesome. Right flip now. it over. What does it say? Dead body. Green snare. You find the green snare. So what is the green now, snare? Well, you, because you found a snare, the, you roll the 10 to see what... Uh, so what roll on this side? Mm, what all the snare involves. I rolled a 10. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious as to the I green... I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Nope, the snare was just a snare. Those are for the buttons on the... on the. Uh, oh, there's a button I can push. Yes. I, I, I've... Did you nope, you got a snare. It was on a four. Uh, does the, the the number matter what they were on? No. Okay. Okay. So what did you what did, what is the snare that he found um, there? You're push one one space towards the start zone. That's it. That's it. Okay. It was not very hard snare. All right. It wasn't a very powerful difficult snare. snare. I feel like I should have made this much harder. So I, I think it's your turn now, Julie. All right. So I'm gonna flank. The Expo Hall will be closing. You're flanking. You rolled a 100. And that was a 16, oh. which is terrible. So I'm going to use my special ability where once per chapter I can reroll one die. Uh, which one? Which one are you going to reroll? The one that isn't the six. And now it's a 66. That, that's a lot better. It really is. So I hit, and I get uh, plus. Oh, it, was, it didn't matter, but I flank, so I have 1d4 for damage. And That's I four. do 4 damage, so now he's down to 12. We're, we're, uh, we're hitting pretty hard here, Julie. Uh-huh, it was nice. It's nice All right. for us. So now it's a bad guy's turn? Nah, you, I thought you went. You went. Yeah, I went. So I said now it's a bad guy's turn, right? Correct. So, their stride is 4. That guy's still going to stay right over there. That one is going to move towards whoever's closest, which I am thinking is you. You want to take your target, your uh, targeting. What? Your target. Take your targeting token there. Take your target. So he can't reach you because we are equidistant. We will roll off to see who we hit. So uh, Matt, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Hits me. Yay, it's not or me. Or tries to hit me. So then we roll to see if he hits me. And that's going to be against your and defense. And it's a 93. 93. That's a hit. Because you don't let me roll. For the villain. For the villain. We'll let you kill yourself, and then me and Matt will be victorious. <laughs> the three is what I look at. Because on the bottom, when we when you were looking at what the side yeah. is, their oh, powers. Oh, is that what that is? So one through six is intimidating glare. Seven through zero is coordinated strike. Intimidating glare means you begin to panic as the highwayman stares you down, lose 1d4 of Vita, and become spooked 5. So first I roll to see the damage I get, which is 2. Oh, I was rolling that And uh, Julie, I have to ask, since he rolled a 93, didn't they have a special power that gets affected with a super high attack roll there? Yep. Sure do. 
higher than a 90, they can pilfer a random consumable from their target. He's this item is lost forever. He's eating your bandages, Julie. Maybe the highwaymen wanted to be the mummies. No more bandages for Julie. None. I mean, she still has a little more. I and mean, maybe he'll eat the next one, too. And then I have to roll to see if I am spooked for five. That's a nine. I got a nine. I am not spooked. He did not intimidate me that much, even though he did, like, the glare. So he did the... He did the, the angry gopher. That didn't matter. Did he do the uh, elevator eyes? There you All go. Right. So now it's back to us. It Matt. is. So it's back to my turn then? Yep. Uh, so I'm going. Let me let me smack this guy again. I'm gonna okay. smack him around. So I am using my uh, aspergillium. Uh, so that's gonna be plus five might. I've got four mites. So that's nine. I think we said it was 36 before. So let me roll my dice here, and I got a 36. So you just made it. Just made it. Just made it. Okay. <laughs> and what do you hit him for? Uh, so I'm gonna hit him with the D4. So I need a D4. I got one right here. So let's see what he gets here. So that's a one. Do one that, damage. That's a little bit yeah. Better. Yeah. I gently caress the side of his face. <laughs> but it's with okay. a little bit of nail. It's okay. Just a little bit of nail at the end. <laughs> All right. All right. My turn. Yep. Feed him up, Josh. All right. I got a. So wait, what weapon are you using? You're using your bail hook. That's plus, plus five, five might. I have five, five might. might. So I got ten. That's ten. Okay. So I need a forty, a thirty-five or higher. That's a sixty something. That's 60. a sixty. So that's enough. That's a four, four five, damage. six damage. Whoa, why why six? I get plus one D4, and then I have my target ability, uh, which gives me plus one damage uh, to so that all was the other guy. He's down to 14, so we're at... So I'm in him 11 hard. 11 and 14. Okay, I just took that hook and like ripped out his cheek. So I have plus four might, plus three might, plus seven might. It's uh, 79. Oh, no. Why am I rolling that? that it's a, it's a 79. It's a nine. It's a 109. No, it's I a know. nine. It's nine. It, uh, she I just wanted to lose. It's fine. Uh-huh. Okay. All He's right. Swing and a miss. So because how much time are we at? Got that minutes. Ten minutes? Okay. So... Now it's uh, their t their turn. So first, I'm just going to roll for All right. the one who's attacking you. That is a 24. 24 that's not oh. enough. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Attack me this time. this time. And good rolls. 36. Good rolls. 36. Six. 63. 63 that's yeah, I'm I'm dyslexic there. It's a 63. So it's a three. That does so hit me. So that's the intimidating glare. So one D4 Vita and spooked five. So one D4 Vita, that's one. You lose one Vita there. And then spooked five. So what am I rolling for that? You're going to roll just the D10. D10. That's a three. You are now spooked. And what does that mean? Wow, what a great question. So that is, again, so if you mark it off on your negative status, spook takes negative five to your might and negative one to your nerve. Which However, like on might. your turn, you can do a nerve check, and if you pass a nerve six, you are no longer spooked. Perfect. So what's the five mean in spook five? That's the check you need to do? What? Why? What's yeah, the five? That's, you have check. to get that or higher. Okay. So all of the skill checks give you the, the status and the number. So all of those, anything that you see, spooked five or... Uh, any of those that you have to nerve, archaeology, occult, it'll be that, and a number, and mm -hmm. that's the number you have to pass to pass it. All right. Very good. No All kill right, so the bad guys. Oh, so it's back to me now. Yeah. So I'm going to attack with my uh, ooh, aspergillium again. So let's... Julie is delighting in your suffering. It's so true. It's like they know me now. I rolled 39. 39. That's enough again, right? You need uh, 36? Oh, no, you have minus five might. I have might. minus five might. So uh, I have four plus the 39, so that's 44, 43. So you're and too you need sure. a 45. Oh, no. When does he check the spook thing? At the beginning or end of his turn? End. Okay. Unfortunately, I swing and a miss. Okay, now, now check, check to see if you can get rid of your spook. Okay, and then I'm rolling a D10 for that, correct? Yep. You need a six or higher. That's, that's a 10. So that's a one, because it should have been the D10s. Oh, but oh <laughs> yeah. So no. No. You're still spooked. I'm still spooked. Whoopsie daisy. All right. I, I was useless that round. 
Josh, you rolled a, a 32, 32, and you've got plus 10 might, I believe. Yes. So, so that's, that's not, a 42. Still not enough. Not enough. My turn. It was going really well for us in the beginning. Julie 52. rolled a... 52. Yeah, Julie's good. Julie's good. So I hit four... Four damage. Four. Julie's beating him up. So this guy is now one, two, three, four, down to seven. People are getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. Um, Don't call me Shirley. I was really hoping you would say that. Okay. Matt will always say that. All right. So now it's uh, our villain's turn. We're going to uh, go the with The chats keep first. it up. They're 714 for the health. Good for them. 22. Misses you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Me again. Matt. 86. 86. So it still isn't over the 90, which is nice for you. But Take one damage. One damage. And you're already spooked, so you don't have to roll to become spooked. Unspooked. You're still spooked. Okay, All so right. it is my turn again. Back to you. So I'm going to roll another two d10s there. Let's see what I get. I rolled a 40. So that's enough, because I have plus five. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to hit him there. So I'm using a d4. Josh took my d4 from me. Uh, let's see what I got, though. I rolled a one again. Another pew, one pew, one pew. hole damage there. Six. All right, and then you have to roll to see if and you're still spooked. That's a two. You're I'm still, still spooked. spooked. That's a 89. 89. That's that definitely hits. Hits. I think that hits. That hits. So you're going to That's three, uh, three damage. damage. One, two, three. So he's down to 11. Seven and 11. All right. My turn. It is your turn. 47, 47, that's another hit. That's a hit. What are you rolling four. there? Four. four. Totally rolling the fours all day long. <laughs> Beating them up. Sounds two. Kicking butt, taking names. That's Julie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now back right. to the baddies. Bad guys. What's happening to Josh first? Josh. That's 18. He's fine. I'm fine. Shrugs it off. I'm uh, the bad man. I don't three care. Or six, which like me again. Yeah. He loves me. And he's doing a 44. 44. That's, I have, that's enough. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that still hits me. So I need a, a D4 of damage. So I'm at three that time. So I'm down to 17. All right. I'm still spooked, though. It's my turn. I'm going to roll my two D10s here. Come on. Big bucks, no whammies. Eight, 82. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> she wants you to roll the other one. 62? 62? Is that enough? <laughs> okay. Uh, so I need my D4 there. Let's see what I get. Roll a one. Another four. No, all right. Yeah. He's defeated. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah. I did it. I yep. hit him with my smoking pocketbook. That's what the priests carry. They carry the smoking pocketbook, right? Yes. All right. So all right. That's, now I have to see if I'm still spooked or not. Yes. So I need to roll D10. That is a four. I'm still spooked. I'm a spooked out priest. It's a uh, 96. 96. All right. Do I get anything? We're getting a 90 plus? No. No? No. That's uh, four, you don't four have damage. Give you that. You you could if you had okay. those abilities. I'm just, so just four? Asking. Yeah. One, two, three, four. He's at seven. seven. Julie, you gonna run over and smack him in the face? I'm gonna search the dead body. Oh, okay. Alright. Your your rogue that is showing good. there, Julie. What'd you find? Um, I receive a boon. A boon? What's a boon? A boon. I should have pulled out. So if you notice, I, I kind of preset all the things, but bear in mind that in addition to everything you see here, there is still so much more I didn't put on the table. Yeah, there's, there's a lot like of just here. enough for this. For this particular scenario. So a boon, which I know is the little... You just get a random one? Yeah. I get to take an additional move. Ooh. Oh. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> So I'm going to move over towards the other guy. One, two, three, four. So I'm heading your way, Josh, to help you. Okay. And now it's uh, his turn? His turn. It's right. Batty's turn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go, oh, go ahead, hit me. Attack. Yep. Smack him. It's a 73. Oh, All right. Yeah, finally hit me. 73. All right. So, Josh, so you got the intimidating glare. One D4 and spooked five. One damage. One hole damage. All right. I'm down the like. And you're still. Sp and now you're spooked, right? Uh, um, uh, I got to roll. roll. See if he is. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're the avenging madman. Yeah. You never. Oh, no, that's deranged. Deranged. Never mind. So, yes, spooked. You are spooked now. Congratulations. Well, no, you have a plus two to your nerve. Okay. To add so to six. that roll. So that's six. What did I need it? You needed a five. All right. So I got, I'm you're not good. spooked. You're not. Yeah. So can you, uh, can you move me uh, up to the 
the the the, the, the guy. body or the guy? Which can I get close enough to the body to the guy to hit him or no? No, I don't think so. Uh, four, right? Yeah. Is One, that adjacent two, still? One, two, three, four. Three, four. Yeah. Three, four. Yeah. Yeah. So you I get, get attacking from there. Yeah. yeah. Very and good. He, he gets plus one damage. I do. It's the guy I'm attacking. He's got the target. So let's see if I hit him there. I rolled 14, so no. No, no. Uh, you want to see if you're still spooked? Uh, yeah, I gotta see if I'm still spooked. Oh, I, you're finally. Hey, spooked. you finally. The, well, I'm okay. The, I killed him. We killed him, and that uh, kind of like. Yeah. 31. 31 plus 10. No, uh, you're not spooked, right? I'm not spooked. So that's so plus 10. It's not enough. It's not, not enough. Julie, it's your it's turn. not enough. Can you move through friendlies? Yep. Sure can. All right. We're going to all uh, hug. So I'm standing on the search location, and I'm choosing not to search right now. I am taking a lot of self-restraint here as a typical rogue player in my games, and instead I'm going to attack the highwaymen. Just saying. 60. 60. That yeah. hits. So you get your D4. Oh, two damage? This time. Oh, two. That's right. Two? Two because, because of my... Yeah. Okay. All right, Stand but now they're going to attack us. Who's so going to hit? One, two, one, two three, three, four, four five, five, six. six. It's going for Julie. Me. Sweet. How about no. a 14? 14. Not that's... enough. Nope. Back to me. I'm going to roly-poly here. See what I get. I got a 34, plus I got another four, plus I got five. So that's plus nine. That's 43. Two, not enough. Not enough. Ah. That's, that's a 90. A 90. So yeah, I think that, that hits. I think that hits. So that's, uh, that's six, six damage. damage, and he's dead. It's out. He's done. We did it. We did it, guys. We did it. I knew we had it in us. All right. So from there, we would continue the story. However, we are at their closing down the entire hall. Yep. So we cannot continue the story. I can tell you that in this particular story, just because we defeated them, they're not all dead. We actually leave the leader alive. And he gives us some information about why there are restless spirits. And uh, we... Is the leader named Bob? Um, Raul. 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 Ooh, Raul. I, I just made that up. Okay. He, is, he could be anything. Uh, Raul. Um, <laughs> I think Raul and uh, Richard are going to go a date later. And, and <laughs> he is... Uh, we would like to, to, you know, take him back to the town, but we actually don't have time because he, he actually has the artifact that caused all the spirits to yeah. rise from the grave. So instead, we have to go put it back. And if we had time, that's what we would do next. But we don't, so we're going to stop. Because the uh, the hall has just closed, and that that's was folklore. That's great timing right there, yeah. Julie. <laughs> My God, that's perfect. So, Julie, where can we find uh, this game? Where can we find it? It's on Kickstarter. I'm so excited. Right now. Right now. This second. Right, right now. now. Right now. Right Not now, later, but until now. Until the 29th folklore. of the month. So folklore the Affliction. Folklore the Affliction. Go back it. Most of what we played with today, you still didn't get to see everything, but the vast majority of this is what is in the core game. I had a few small components that are in the expansion, um, but you can play... Let's come up with the Horn of Gondor. I, <laughs> the horn, I just saw the guy walk the down the hall. The Horn of Gondor is playing in the background because we were summoning <laughs> for help. Yeah. In the game. There we go. There um, we go. So, yes. That is, that is Folklore the Affliction. It is available on Kickstarter right this second. Um, and then it will be available for retail sometime around probably Gen Con. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So hopefully Gen Con release? Yeah, for retail. For not retail. for Kickstarter backers first, retail second. Yeah. All right, Julie. Thank you so much, not just for this stream, but for everything this weekend. We it really loved pleasure. having you on. It was a ton of fun. Uh, folklore was a ton of fun, and we're really excited that it's doing so well on Kickstarter. Awesome. Uh, thank everyone you. at home, go check it out. And everyone at home, thank you so much for joining us for this weekend of coverage from PAX Unplugged. We had a great time, and uh, we really do appreciate all of you watching. And this is Twist Gaming signing off from PAX Unplugged uh, year one. Let's see, let's see what happens next year. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, as always, I'm Matt, and it's been a pleasure. I'm Josh. I'm Julie. Bye, everyone. Bye. And